all images are crucial to the understanding of the natural world. As the old adage goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. Today is very exciting because we've got the chance to do something that we've never done before here at the museum. Oh, wow. We are going to scan the fetus of a harbour porpoise. So you can still see the umbilical cord oh, attached. Wow. Yeah. An adult female harbour porpoise was found on a beach in Sunderland and inside this female we discovered a fetus. So that meant that we had a whole specimen that could be CT scanned for 3D imaging. Okay. These images will be of interest to scientists all over the world who study this species. The use of images in science is nothing new. It was those early expeditions in the late 18th century when images really started to be used in the pursuit of science. They took artists to record what they saw, and in a way, the images they created were the photographs of the day. The things of fantastic beauty, and we all think of them as being works of art, but actually what they are is pieces of evidence that were brought back from far-flung lands that showed people back in Europe that such a thing did exist. Here at the museum we have over 350,000 artworks spanning the last four centuries and covering all the subject areas of natural history. When you look at an illustration by somebody like Arthur Church, who was a botanist and a scientist in his own right, they were quite innovative. He dissected flowers like a, an x-ray section that you'd get today, but these illustrations he carried out over a hundred years ago. With new scanning techniques, you can look at a fossil of a flower or a mineral or some sort of something that you, you don't want to cut it open necessarily. But with these new techniques, you can cut it open virtually. Wow, that's amazing. Ah, you can really see the ear bones. In the bottom of the jawbone, there's a dense area, and that is part of the hearing apparatus. Mm. So the sound comes in and travels along the jawline into the inner ear. So it's just nice to see how the two are made of a similar density of material, even at the fetal stage. That's fantastic. A few years ago, when people first discovered that you could look at DNA sequences, many people said, oh, well, we don't, we're not going to need all these specimens and all these microscopes and ways of looking at things anymore because the DNA will tell us everything. But the more we look at DNA, the more we realize that you need to look at all kinds of different types of evidence in order to make your hypotheses. Looking at a specimen is evidence. Looking at a painting that someone did in the 18th century is evidence of what it looked like. Drawings of dissections, scanning electron micrographs, CT scans, cleared stained fish. All of these give different views on the objects that we study. And it can tell you something that's a little bit different than what you knew before. But what it really does is it creates for you the next set of questions which is the really exciting bit. <laughs>